Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Marshall here bringing you a one versus one between Yaguz and the Blue Delhi. The Delhi Sultanate going straight for a house off the bat. Five Vils just going focusing on food by the looks of things. Meanwhile, it's going up against Diva, the Red Mongolian. Going heavy on wood off the bat. Five vils. Now the reason that a Mongol player would want to do that off the bat is because they're going to be looking for uh, ooh, over going up against the, the side of the map. I'll talk about that in a second. But going heavy on wood will mean that they'll be wanting to potentially go into uh, early horsemen. Also potentially um, an early gur somewhere and maybe send it somewhere else. Or, more importantly, outposts. Popping up wood for outposts and getting uh, vision and uh, map control is very important and pivotal for a Mongol player. And here, look, we already see a stable coming up, so here's the horseman coming up for that. Now, what I was mentioning about the Ovu, with it being against the side of the map here, and kind of away from the TC, means it's less likely to be scouted. A little bit, just a little bit. But with the... Uh uh, stable being sat there. It'll be able to build two horsemen at once, but the Khan got a little too close for comfort there. And I think Yaguz managed to quick micro those Vils into the TC to get loads more arrows coming out of that. And the thing with age four over age two is uh, you can't really dodge those arrows. It's just a thing that happens, unfortunately. So you get too close in the early game, you're likely to lose your scout or your Khan. And that's not good news, because now Diva misses out on scouting, and he's going to miss out on giving bonuses to himself and nearby cavalry, like uh, movement speed. You sort of saw the signal flare as he, he ran off earlier for movement speed. But now we're going to get horsemen coming out. Are those scouts, isn't it? Scouts. Mm, I don't know about that. But a couple coming out already. Just to, to keep tabs on the map, really, more than anything else. Coming out in a pack of two there as well, so you, even using the stone to build uh, dual scouts is an interesting choice. Still, though, going up on more food now is D.Va, potentially looking to go for second age when we get a transition to gold. Or that food and wood combo will just feed straight into uh, b -b -b horsemen. There you go, see? 100, wood, 100 food. And he would going forwards. But my what? Well, this is interesting. Like I did uh, did say, outposts as the Mongols. Pretty, pretty potent. They get the Yam uh, the Yam technology if you want to go and research it. But it also starts to uh, encroach upon Yaguz's base. Now the thing with Yaguz being the Abbasid is they get access to all technologies for free. Absolutely for free. So this lumber camp here is researching forestry for absolutely free, but it takes an age to do there. Three minutes, four seconds to do that. Now this can be sped up by garrisoning priests or scholars in mosques. And then the building that is doing the research has to be under the influence of this mosque. Right? But... It's, it kind of offsets itself a bit because the time boost is not a huge amount and uh, the the scholars themselves cost a fair bit of gold. 150, I think. 150 gold. However, that's going to be offset by the Rush to Age 2 Dome of Faith here, which produces scholars at half price. Now, interesting here, we've got D.Va being a bit annoying with some scouts. This I actually quite like. They're not anticipating actually burning the building here and getting the resource plunder for doing that burning. But they're not in range of the TC, so they're not getting attacked. And they're keeping a vill from doing resources. And they're making this mining camp more expensive because of the amount of resources that you'd have to use to actually repair it. It's, it's not a huge amount of resources, but it's, you know, it, it could potentially all add up as we go. But here we go. Potential uh, potential scholar city here for the Abbasid. Much more of a defensive, slower sieve than otherwise. We've got our outposts going up. Someone queued up there. I don't know. Uh, don't know who's building it. 
Oh, here we go. Coming around the back with a few horsemen. This could be really nasty. We've got the Khan here as well, who's going to give uh, give movement speed. Of course, the, the Mongol player here isn't in the the the, uh, the feud age yet, so he doesn't have access to the attack speed arrow. But the maneuver arrow might just be might be good enough. But this Vil coming up here is is, is really nasty. Oh, but it gets cancelled by the archery range going up. The horsemen just need to protect this Vil from from anything here. There we go. Look. The Abbas, uh, bleh, not the Abbas, the Delhi Vils. Trying to keep them back. Trying to stop this uh, this outpost from going up. But look at this, the Delhi now. Playing to their strength, strengths, keeping everything under the watchful eye of the TC rather than going too far out. And making sure that the Mongol player can't really get in. And something that D.Va hasn't done very well here is adapt to this situation because we've still got horsemen and melee coming out which aren't going to do a huge amount of damage. What have we got in terms of production abilities? We've got a barracks coming now which could potentially build some spearmen to offset any uh, Delhi uh, cavalry. There we go, we started to get some spearmen. They can also of course garrison in the outposts for a little bit of extra arrowage. But the Mongols here, the Mongols are supposed to really do effective harassment and currently we're not getting that. It looks like we might have... Uh, no. Never mind. Ignore that. <laughs> this is complete encirclement here. This is, this is absolutely nasty. I mean, the good thing about getting this yam bonus from these outposts is that you can just charge into this vill line and charge out. The problem is the Mongol player is melee and everything's under the watchful eye of that TC as I've already mentioned. So we really need the Magadai but you don't get access to those until Feudal Age and D.Va is not going for Feudal Age. Everything's very consolidated in the Mongol base or very centralized is the word I was looking for. And all of a sudden Yaguz Doesn't have a huge amount of military, but is staving off Mongol aggression. Which is really, really quite potent. We've got a few a few priests starting to come out as well now. We've got, there we go, we've got a scholar there. Have we got any more coming out? No, not yet. Potentially an option for future to increase uh, research. We've just got lots of production buildings coming out more than anything else. The Delhi realizes it's like, okay, it's go time. Time to get some military. Let's do this. But Diva just, as I say, isn't reacting to the situation. You should come back, get some um, some ranged units, so that you can harass these villagers without running too far in. Right. I mean, the scholars are going to do well in terms of healing the the units here, because what the Mongol player doesn't have, of course, as well. Is that healing until the castle age with the uh, the Khan landmark, Carol Tai or whatever it's called? Not capitalizing on the situation here. Let's have a look at the vill counts: twenty food, seven wood, three on gold for your goods, and twenty-eight vills for Diva. Bit of a disparity there in terms of resource production, and Diva, looking at the actual current resources, is not exactly close to going to uh, to age two either, which I think is definitely a bad choice because the Mongols get that power in the age two, especially with fielding spearmen now in the range of these uh, Yam network. Right, you can either spend time researching this that you have to get to Castle Age to get to anyway, or you can build some deer stones and make those spearmen actually a prominent threat. Because if you transition as the Mongol player right now to Spearman and harass this Vill line with that Deerstone, you've actually got quite a mobile army of Spearmen and you've got some defensive locations for them to run back to. The only issue then would be the archery range from Yaguz could potentially start fielding, uh, fielding archers to deal with those Spearmen, which we are starting to see actually as those archers precisely to deal with those spearmen and indeed the horsemen because of course the horsemen are light units 
archers are good against those rather than heavy units. There we go. Could potentially see a bit of a, a bit of a clash here. Ah, my mouse. Round under an outpost. I'm not doing a huge amount of damage as that outpost, and now we're just going to reveal a few scouts again. Not going to do a huge amount of damage. See, the only reason for transitioning into those scouts early in the game was because the Khan was lost, and they weren't actually doing a huge amount against that mine. It was an interesting idea, but it wasn't particularly effective. And now we've got Delhi outposts just holding the fort, quite literally. And now Delhi transitioning to food in another way, because the Delhi get bonuses from uh, from berry bushes that are next to mills. Oh my. Four scholars constantly healing this cavalry force will completely prevent D.Va from getting in. Cavalry against cavalry. Archers against spearmen from the defending Delhi. The Mongols aren't going to do anything. There's too many units now from Yagos as well, just completely holding off. And more priests coming in. More archers, sorry. And the Mongols aren't even close to age two. They've got us so much gold. They're floating gold up the yin-yang, but they're not actually making headway here. And they're trying to queue up outposts here to try and get some kind of defense against all of this stuff. But it's not going to happen. You've got too many priests healing everything, which is really changing the tide here. The Khan was out of position completely, so he couldn't even use the movement speed uh, on his armies. And, and that was that. There's nothing left. Just completely... Good defense there. Solid, solid defense from Delhi. From your goes there. Well, well played. And uh, a few short-sighted decisions from the, the Mongol player. You really want to keep ramping up with, uh, with the Delhi player. Because, of course, all those technologies, the Delhi player takes ages to research. But by getting up to Feudal Age early, at least you get access to them. And when your opponent doesn't go up to the feudal age, then you can really start ramping away, and that, that time disparity is less of an issue. Anyway, folks, thank you very much for watching. I've been Marshall. Please do drop any, uh, drop any likes if you liked, and, uh, and comments and your thoughts. Let me know. It really helps the channel out. Much engagement. But anyway, that's all I've got for you. I'll see you next time.